What's up everybody? I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. I'm Anthony and on today's video we're going to be doing 10 tips to hopefully make your storm season go by just a little bit smoother. Stay tuned. Now the beauty of this list is that it can apply to almost anywhere. Now for me, I live in the southeast, so yes, I have to deal with things like hurricanes. However, there is a big portion of the country that has to worry about things like tornadoes. And another big portion has to worry about extreme winter weather. The best thing about this list is it can apply to all of those. It's not just applying to hurricanes. So hey, even if you don't live in the southeast, I guarantee you, you can take something away from this video. So like I said, I live in the southeast. For those of you who don't know, I'm in South Carolina and we are now having to deal with hurricane season ramping up. For those of you who are unaware, hurricane season starts right around the beginning of June, but usually nine times out of 10, these serious storms don't start to show up until about August or September. The most serious usually being in September. So now is the time to make sure that whatever you have in your house, you are double checking, triple checking to make sure that if that thing does come, you're not stuck in a situation you don't want to be in. And this list of things that I've been doing around my house will absolutely help you. So number one, the most important in my opinion is going to be insurance. Please make sure that you have the proper insurance for your area. Now I know this may seem the most obvious thing out there, but you'd be surprised at how many people are uninsured or underinsured. Now I'm not saying you got to go out there and get the absolute premium Cadillac policy, but what I am saying is if you own things, make sure you got coverage on them. So things like boats, car, home, apartments, there's a reason why I'm hitting apartments. Make sure you got your insurance. So I've seen boats sink with extreme amounts of rain, regardless if they got a bilge pump. Make sure your insurance covers that. I've seen cars get hit by trees falling and they try to claim active God because the tree was alive. Make sure you're not getting in some sort of situation like that. Same thing with your home. Make sure if you are in an area that gets high winds, you have the proper coverage for those high winds. All right. A lot of states are different when it comes to the hurricane policies and tornado policies. Just make sure your state's covering what it says it's going to cover. I'm sorry, your insurance covers what it says it's going to cover. And the most important is renter's insurance. If you do not own where you live, please get renter's insurance. It's not that expensive and it will absolutely save you. I cannot tell you how many friends of mine who are in the military, who are stationed with me in North Carolina, who during Hurricane Irene were renting a house with their family. Hurricane Irene came, something happened to the house, something flooded and they lost everything. And insurance said, oh, sorry, you don't have renter's insurance. Because for some reason they think that since they are renting the homeowner's policy of the person who owns the home will cover all their stuff. Not how this works. Renter's insurance will absolutely save you. Now me, I live in the barracks, yet I still had renter's insurance. So when my power went out and I lost all my freezer and refrigerator, guess who got a check for $300 to make up for everything they just lost because the power went out? Me. So please get renter's insurance if you are renting. And finally, this is important, especially if you live down south. Uh, South Carolina in 2015 got what's called the thousand year flood once every thousand years well we got it a lot of people flooded out and guess what a lot of people realized about their insurance companies they didn't have flood insurance because it's not part of your regular package you have to add that on so if you are in an area that either has an even remote possibility of flooding add that on save yourself a headache add it on Okay, so number two, another very basic thing that a lot of people need to realize, but I guarantee you a lot of people don't have it. Please have up to seven days worth of food and water stash. And when I say food, I'm talking about things that you do not have to cook. So things like canned food, dehydrated food, something of the sort, MREs even, uh, because there's probably a good chance you're gonna be without power if you come across a hardcore storm. So no power, especially if you live out in the country like me, means no water unless you have other means to get water. Also, there's no way to cook food. You're probably gonna lose your refrigerator, so come up with a plan. It's really not that difficult, and if you are considering doing things with water, there are so many different ways to do it, it's actually ridiculous. I've made plenty of videos on water storage. Some of the ones that I personally use are the seven gallon aquatainers. They are extremely cheap, I think like $16 and they obviously hold seven gallons. So if you are two people in a household, that will actually last you 
almost actually a little over three days so definitely 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 make sure that you are stashing water potable water because when things do hit and there is a storm coming like tomorrow or the next day where do you think everybody and their mom goes to the store sitting in these long giant lines to go buy a whole bunch of food they should have already had and a whole bunch of water they should have already had so even if you want to stash two cases of water away in your spare bedroom please do that it'll save you so many headaches Number three, another very obvious one, but something that a lot of people don't seem to know until they absolutely need to, and then they're freaking out, running around like a chicken with their head cut off because they don't know this stuff. Know how to turn off your electricity, your water, and your gas. Because God forbid something happens, tree falls in the house, something weird goes down, and you have to turn off one of those. You don't want to be running around not knowing how to do it and causing more problems, all right? So something as simple as, hey, I have a well, so I know how to turn my water off via electric pump or the actual shutoff valve from the well saver to make sure that there's no water running to my house just in case a pipe bursts from a tree hitting the house. Now, when it comes down to things like electricity, obviously go to your fuse box, flip the main breaker. That's about the most that you can do. And with your gas, know where your gas, if you have gas, know where the inlet is coming from the city or a tank in the back and know where the shutoff valve is because again if something smashes the net and you don't want gas leaking in, in your house because that is very 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 dangerous so again i know this sounds really obvious but please know where that stuff's at so now on to number four this is something again that everybody should have but it's amazing how many people don't please have a fire extinguisher they're not expensive. I think I got this thing for like $50 and make sure that you have enough for the house. If you have two stories like I do, make sure you got one upstairs, make sure you got one downstairs. Even better if you have one in the kitchen and one in the garage if you have a garage. Just in case something happens, you're not running around the house, say some, some tree limb falls through, busts a wire, and all of a sudden your living room catches on fire. You don't want to have to run upstairs to grab the only fire extinguisher in the house if you even have one. And potentially have things get much worse and I've seen because I used to work on people's houses on roofing I've seen several times where lightning has actually struck a house and the only thing that saved them was they were able to go outside in the storm with a hose trying to stop the fire so if you have something like this 10 times easier bing bang boom put the fire out you can save all your stuff okay so number five this is going to be another one of those easy things that you can do for free it just takes a little bit of time come up with a plan and when i say come up with a plan i'm talking about there's probably a really good chance if you are in a house if you have a spouse you have opposing jobs one of you works over here one of you works over here someone stays at home and someone else goes over here so you're not together all the time so if there's a storm that comes through this is more or less for people in tornado areas but hey hurricanes spin up tornadoes all the time so if one of you are are far apart and something happens and say the towers go down the cell towers you got to know where to meet, you know, hey, come home. If I can't come home, go here, that kind of thing. Know your evacuation routes. So I think every state, I know in South Carolina they do, there is designated evacuation routes if they choose to evacuate certain parts of the state. Obviously, it's going to apply to the beaches, but know those. Know where they are. Know how to get to them. Same thing applies to your material list. Make sure when you are leaving your house, if you have to evacuate, you are Doing things like grabbing important documents like deed to your home, uh, stuff you know that you need to have to prove who you are, like pictures. If you happen to get separated from your family, make sure you have a picture in your wallet. Hey, have you seen my wife or have you seen my kid? Hey, that's my child and I can prove it because I have a picture. I know phones are good for that, but hey, your phone might not work. So having a solid picture be like, yep, we got separated, but that's my kid. Something as simple as that, make a plan, can absolutely stop so many headaches. So again, really easy, it's free, but it might take some time. Make sure you're sitting down with your spouse and you're coming up with some form of plan just in case something bad happens. Let's call this an intermission. Sometimes we have to be reminded of why we do what we do. And this is my reason, all right? It's not just me I have to think about. I have to think about my family. I have to think about who is counting on me. And storms are going to happen regardless and I want to make sure that my family, my kid, 
is going to be able to go through all this stuff with as little issues as possible. So if I can think about things now, if I can do stuff now, then I can avoid some major problems because this little girl is counting on me to make sure that she's, you know, safe as can be. Say hi. She's one now, can you believe it? Time goes by so fast. All right, let's continue with the list. Okay, so number six is another one of those things that really doesn't cost too much money, but depending on your situation, it might actually cost you some money. But please make sure you're doing things like regular routine maintenance. Now, what do I mean? Again, this is coming from somebody who worked in the construction industry for a while. There is so many times after a humongous storm that people shoot themselves in the foot with damage to their homes because they weren't doing proper maintenance. So when I say proper maintenance, I'm talking about, hey, making sure that you're using sealant on windows, making sure that you are resealing your chimney, making sure that you are cleaning your gutters. Things that sound really stupid, but they make a humongous difference. If you have clogged gutters, there's a really good chance if there's enough rain coming down fast enough, that water is going to back up under the shingles and get inside your home. You don't need that. No one needs that, so doing something as simple as making sure that your gutters are clean will absolutely save you. And just because you have gutter guards does not actually mean that your gutters are clean, because uh, there's been many jobs I've been on that people have gutter guards and they're just as, you know, crudded and there's flooding in the house that way. So make sure you're doing those things. So small, simple maintenance items like, hey, make sure your gutters are clean, make sure things are caulked and sealed and making sure that if you have drains around your home, especially if you have a foundation who's up, making sure that that stuff is cleaned out, that way you're not getting water where it shouldn't be. So number seven, this one's gonna apply more to people who may be in a, a more rural situation, but hey, this can apply to city folks as well. But please have a plan if there is an extended power outage. Now I know I mentioned things about food and water, but I'm not just talking about food and water because there's other things that can happen in an extended power outage, all right? 2015, we were without power for a week. Now, that was just my area. Over close towards the coast, they were without power for several weeks. So when it comes down to it, you have to think about seven days without being able to leave your home and without being able to flick a switch. So everything you might need, make sure you have that at home. And when I'm saying this, I'm more or less talking about things like medications if you have to have medications make sure that you have enough at home to where if you can't leave for a week or two you're still good to go and i know a lot of doctors will write you a prescription for further enough in advance to where you are not constantly needing a resupply right as you run out there's usually a good way that most doctors will give you at least a 30-day supply so you're not sitting there at the mercy of a pharmacy and if the pharmacy is closed because all the power lines are down you won't be able to get your stuff anyway so when i talk about things like this i'm talking about medicine but i'm also talking about hygiene supplies medical supplies make sure you have kits at home that are built for this that way if you don't have to leave you're still good to go so you know, say kids growing outside because they're bored because they've been without power for four days. They go and scratch their knee and if you don't have a boo-boo kit at home. Well, now you're going to have to leave, but you can't leave. So what are you going to do? So small little basic things. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people don't have a basic first aid kit. Make sure you're thinking about that stuff. Get your mindset right. If you can't leave the house in seven days, what will you need? Okay, so number eight, this is going to apply to people who are in a more active storm area than others, but from most of the country, you can probably use this. If you are in an area that does have a very active storm season, make sure that you are giving yourself an opportunity to invest in your success. Does that make sense? Like, hey, I'm in an area that could lose power, so I should probably invest in a generator. They don't cost very much. You can spend probably two, $300 to get a decent one. Or you can get some of those solar powered battery packs that can run small things in your house like phone charging, tablet charging, uh, if you need those uh, machines for when you sleep, like the apnea machines. So you can make sure all those things are still running if you don't have power. Another thing that you can think about is if you are in the woods like me, if there's a storm that runs through, you're probably gonna have to deal with something like down trees. So it would be a very good idea 
to pick up one of these. Now, if you don't remember, I did a video in the beginning part of 2020, actually, before the whole thing went down with the, uh, the illness everybody started getting. But in January, we had a real bad storm run through. A microburst came and knocked a tree down onto my home. Now, this tree was a hickory tree, a hickory tree, which is a very dense wood, and it landed on my house bent the power mast over a whole bunch of bad stuff was happening i'm on top of the house in the middle of the night because it's like 11 30 at night time with an axe because the chainsaw that i had at the time a pool in would not start so yeah now i rectified that i got me a good one an echo to make sure that if i ever do need to start my chainsaw i can start my chainsaw because i know how to start this thing up no problem. Cold start, hot start, whatever. Boom, this thing starts up like a champ. That way I'm not on top of my house at 1130 at night with a freaking axe trying to chop a very dense hardwood to get it off of my home so I can put the tarp where the hole is and stop having water fall into my house. Uh, that legitimately happened to me. I will post a link down below to that video. I'll put it up here as well just in case you missed it so you can see uh, the scenario that I had to deal with. So yes, if you have the opportunity and you are, and you are in an area that get storms, I would definitely suggest getting things and investing in uh, your own well-being by getting things like battery packs, generators, or chainsaws. All right, so number nine. This is gonna be one of those things that's gonna be more long-term prepared, but if you are a homeowner, if you live out in the country, this will absolutely help you out, no questions asked. Uh, like I said, I worked in construction. I can't tell you how many times I'd have people calling my cell phone or calling the office saying, hey, I got a hole in my roof or I have a window that's broken or I have whatever issue and we can't come out and fix it till it stops raining. So if, you know, the rain stops in three more days and you got three days of dealing with it before we can come out there because I'm not going to jeopardize safety of my crews getting on your house, especially during thunderstorms with lightning. So uh, that's something you have to really think about and you should definitely take that into your own hands and start stashing away things to mitigate that. So if you can, I highly suggest getting some form of building materials and stashing them away. Now for me, I like to stash away two pieces of OSB or plywood just to make sure that if something happens, I'm good to go. I stash away some 2x4s, screws, nails, tarps, and big pieces of cardboard. Uh, big pieces of cardboard because, hey, if you got a storm, especially tornadoes, that's going to drop a whole bunch of hail, and they're calling for it, why would you not run out there, throw a whole bunch of blankets or cardboard on your car's windshield to make sure that that's not broken if you need to rush out of the situation? So... I don't know, I'm talking about like bad, you know, compounding things. Murphy always shows up at the worst time, you know, worst possible time, and things never seem to just happen in ones. They always seem to happen in threes or fours. So, uh, God forbid something happens to your home, you start getting hail, hail smashes up your window. Next thing you know, you got a medical emergency, and you got to drive with a broken windshield to the hospital to try to get your kid taken care of or call an ambulance, that kind of thing. So, if we can stop as many situations as possible by thinking ahead, uh, I think that's only going to help out in the long run. So by putting away things like this, wood, cardboard, uh, zip ties, zip ties for, you know, random things, ratchet straps, tape, you know, gorilla tape, all that stuff will only help you. Cool? All right, and finally, number 10, something that I always seem to forget about. I always seem to put by the wayside until I actually needed it but I seeked out the proper people to hook me up with good information. Make sure that you are giving yourself an opportunity to get proper communication. When I say that, I'm talking about something other than your cell phone, because if something happens to that tower, you're gonna be lost in the sauce and not have any idea what's actually going on, especially if your power's out or your cable's out and you can't actually watch what's going on on TV. So by having something as simple as a radio, Battery powered radio, yeah, how many people have those anymore, right? Battery powered radio or a hand crank radio, it's the Weather X. I got this thing for like 20 bucks. I'll put a link down below. Uh, you can make sure that you're still listening to the weather report if you are bunkered down. So, hey, having something like this, I know it sounds really stupid, but it'll absolutely pay off. And if you have the opportunity and you can go one step farther, I would definitely suggest getting something a little bit more serious. This is a Baofeng radio, a UV82HP. 
I was actually instructed to get this by my friends over at uh, Steve over at Corsair Trainers and Reed over at Manifestations of Imagination. I'll put their channels down below. But I was always weak on comms. Well, I've actually had to use this twice now because I'm not too far from town. I can still hear when the tornado siren goes off. Now, there's been a couple times where we've had inclement weather and the tornado siren's gone off and I'm able to tune into this. I don't talk on it. I just listen and I tune into my local fire department station. Then I'm able to hear, hey, this is a tornado warning. Please take cover and they break, go right to the point. So that is why having something like this is absolutely necessary because it cuts through all the crap. Yeah, I still had cell phone service, but you had to manually search for that. If I can just turn this thing on, tune into a station and get all my reports that way, even better. So that's why having something like this will absolutely pay off. Comms are very important and I've come to realize that. So yes, that is going to be my number 10. Hope you are considering that as well. Well, there you have it. Those are my 10 tips to hopefully make your storm season just a little bit easier to go through. Now, I'm a realist. I know that everybody watching this video is probably going to have, at some point in their life, a storm situation that does not end up favorably. All right, it's already happened to me. It happened to me last year. I didn't think it was going to happen, but we had a microburst blow all the trees down and one hit my house. So, boom. And it very well could happen again. Regardless of the area that you may be living in, even outside of the USA, I guarantee you there's some part of the world where you will have to deal with at least one weather situation annually. So if you can prepare for that one, it's only going to be easier for you, all right? So hopefully this list helped you out. Hopefully you're able to take one, two, three, four, all of these and put them into your back pocket so you can make sure that you are protecting your family and all your property, all right? If this list helped you, please do me a humongous favor and give me a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. Subscribe, and I will catch y'all on the next one, all right?